Hey friends, welcome back to our channel. Today I'm brewing a oolong tea, Shui Xian. It's my personal tea time, so I'm going to use this super tiny little one to brew. Um, I suggest you brew alone, so get your tea ready and let's talk about how to brew Yan Cha Shui Xian. If this is your first time tuning in, hey there, my name is Jen. Phil and I run an online tea boutique, Jen Tea. At Zhen Tea, we specialize in fine tasting great Chinese tea. In this channel, we share videos about uh, how to brew teas like this, uh, tea travels, uh, tea gardens, and much, much more. So if you also love tea, please consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell so that uh, you get notified as soon as we have new content. Let's dive in. to tea brewing, the first question and the most asked question is how much tea leaf should I put? Well, you can use uh, grams or ounces to measure it, but always remember to uh, match the amount of tea leaf with the size of vessel you choose. And if you are not very familiar with uh, making the tea amount and the guy one size match, it might be tricky to directly get the tea leaves in the tea presentation bowl. So a trick I often use is to use the gaiwan to measure the amount of tea leaves I'm going to use. Of course, I do this when the gaiwan is still uh, dry. So now this will be the amount of tea leaf I'm gonna use. First step for any tea brewing is pretty much the same. We're gonna rinse and warm up the guy one. A warmed guy one will really help us smell the uh, leaf aroma. When it comes to rock tea brewing, you want to use boiling water. And the first thing we do is to give it a rinse. This step is a very brief and uh, quick brewing. Well, if you wonder uh, why we're doing this, how to do it, and when should we do rinse or when not to rinse? We have a video explaining these details. And this is also great to uh, get your teacup serving pot primed for the official infusion. First infusion is pretty much instant. As you can tell from the, uh, the rings, the color of the liquor really comes out. And in terms of uh, rock tea, you are usually uh, looking for this kind of dark orange, deep amberish color. Sometimes it could be even a little bit to the ruby side. This is delightful. Always remember to smell. I was gonna say smell the gaiwan lid, but actually smell everything if you can. The gaiwan lid for sure, because like this is so creamy. As a rock tea, we often talk about uh, granite, rocky, that dark chocolate, but on the gaiwan lid, because of the temperature, the ambient temperature, it really pulls that uh, creaminess of the tea with a little touch of a floral that is like really teasing. 
and that smells totally different than the dry leaf we just smelled as well as the yeah the wet the wet leaf is granite like almost mineral really yeah it's to like these smells totally different and in terms of tea tasting you pretty much want to enjoy every itty bitty little things about this tea so be sure to smell anything like pot teacup i'm honest they're not the same they're actually not the same because of the shape of the vessel is different the temperature is different it really uh, reflects the fun of tea tasting mm. and slurp the tea if you have been watching our channel for a while especially those brewing videos uh, you probably noticed that when we brew oolong tea, we suggest uh, using about two-thirds of the gaiwan as a uh, guideline in terms of how much tea leaf you should put. Well, in this case, as you can see, this is way more than two-thirds. Usually, with the rock teas, we put a boss of tea leaf. Yes, and another thing is because we're brewing shui xian, um, so rock tea is a kind of oolong tea that comes from the Wuyi Mountains. It actually re refers to a family of uh, uh, teas. There are many different cultivars of uh, uh, rock tea. I think more the the true similarity between this is its own process uh, is this kind of a rock tea process, a little bit deeper. I mean more oxidization, a little bit. Uh, more roasting giving that dark chocolate some sometimes even tobacco mineral rocky flavor but because the cultivars are different uh, the the, the rock tea actually look different i remember when i first get to know a uh, rock tea i feel like all of those tea look the same dark straight uh, tea leaves but actually, if uh, you've been brewing wulong, especially rock wulong for a bit, you probably notice that different uh, uh, rock tea look different. For example, shui xian is actually a big, quite, uh, just in the realm of rock tea, a bigger leaf cultivar, while rou gui usually has smaller leaf. So in terms of uh, the leaf amount, if we're putting shui xian there, because it's a big leaf, it's really crooked and uh, it, it's really bulky. So the amount we put would a little bit more than we often say two thirds. Well, if you're brewing like say rou gui, a smaller leaf uh, rock tea cultivar, you might consider uh, maybe half line is good enough because the smaller leaf, they can pack a dancer. Second infusion. Another instant uh, infusion for me. It's pretty much when you brew rock tea, the first uh, at least the three infusions is pretty much instant in and out. And you know, when we brew, the instant in and out still have a slight speed difference. If I have been taking a long rest between the first infusion and the second infusion, maybe I would do really quick, really speedy in out flash infusion. Uh, those are those details we want to tweak when it comes to uh, tea brewing. Sometimes it might freak people out because oh there are so many little things but those i consider are fun things to play with and dial in what i like and i suggest you to do the same don't be stressed out because every little thing can affect the flavor instead consider this like a little game and have fun with it and practice and never be afraid that i'm doing something wrong or why everybody brews so differently, which one should I do? It's just a tea.
Let's brew it, sip it, and just have fun with it. I actually brew the third and the fourth infusion off camera and come back to brew the fifth and the sixth infusion with you together. This is the time when we start to have to wait a little bit. Usually we do first the four infusions on camera, but in this case, I think because the first few infusions are all flash infusions, I think um, it really needs a lot of practice with how fast you can go and do the twist there. Not too much of a technical thing. Now it's the fifth infusion, things start to get more interesting. Uh, we have to consider the real brewing time. Oftentimes we want to figure out, is there a formula that I can use with the tea that consistently uh, give me good result? Unfortunately, the answer is yes, but not really. You can get a feeling of how long you should steep a tea, but even with shui xian, different shui xian are different. So the most important thing to do is evaluate every infusion. So how long did I steep this. I wasn't thinking, okay, fifth infusion has to be 30 seconds. It's because I had the, uh, the first, second, third, fourth, especially the third fourth, that really helped me predict how long I want to steep this tea for the next infusion. I like it. Uh, right consistency for me. Consistency is a reflect of tea quality because sometimes you will have tea that you know when you brew the first few infusions that taste pretty good and the fifth, sixth, the decline was more like a, a cliff fall. It's so drastic from pretty good to totally empty. That's a crash. Well, good teas keep performing in the more elegant way even though the later infusions for sure the tea is gonna show tiredness, but how it performs will be more steady. You can expect every infusion has a little bit less, has a little bit less. At the same time, as tea brewer, we also want to make sure our brewing is consistent. So to achieve that, it's very important to pay attention to the liquor color. Uh, when we taste the tea, we want to reflect on how long did we brew it, and expect how long we will be brewed for the next infusion. In later infusions, we usually add about 20 seconds more or 30 seconds more, but because I taste this tea from especially the fourth infusion, fifth infusion, which is this one, I feel like it still has a lot of gap. It still has, it holds its uh, thickness. The, the taste, it holds there. So I feel like my sixth infusion, I'm not gonna uh, add a longer time. I'm going to try to shoot uh, for similar duration compared to the fifth infusion. The guy wanted has changed too. It's an, uh, not as, actually not creamy at all. I don't smell much of the creamy, but mostly that light white little flower floral, like almost um, orchid. I would say it's that kind of a gentle orchid flower. Yeah, now the, hmm. Now it's a little bit creaminess. And I like the color. Liquor color is always uh, the key for us to look at the consistency of our brew. It's not an absolute uh, 
it's not an absolute rule because sometimes you will have tea that you find that the color is quite consistency but the flavor has dropped drastically yeah nailed it well i hope this video is helpful for you uh, when brewing shui xian and actually you can use these hacks and tips in brewing any other rock teas if you just get into gongfu tea brewing and found this video a little bit uh, over the top too much information don't worry we have a video showing you how to brew rock tea step by step in a gaiwan teapot and even a travel mug so be sure to check out this if you enjoy this type of chit chat and tea brewing, please give me a thumbs up. It will really help our channel grow. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Until next time, keep steeping.